Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to IRD YouTube channel. My name is Yar Ajak and on today's program we are going to focus on a female South Sudanese female artist that has been doing art for the last 10 years to spread different messages of in terms of political, economical, social issues. And this series that we are going to discuss today is about the loose woman telling different stories about South Sudanese women that from you know she's making her 35th birthday this this saturday on the 16th of october and definitely through that she's trying to tell the stories of many young south sudanese that they are going through using herself as an example of the many other south sudanese she has been doing this and she's the founder of baobab art foundation with many artists that are under this and this is a series actually with over 30 pieces of art that will be displayed from saturday to wednesday that's about five days so if you are in juba you're highly welcome and actually she has done her display of arts in many countries like south sudan of course in kenya uganda uk and many other countries that she'll be visiting so ladies and gentlemen at this point i would love to welcome to you abul uyai So as we continue to do this interview, Abul is actually finishing up on her piece of art. This is one of the art that she's working on among the other 30 pieces and just doing a little bit of demonstration. And she'll be explaining to us what this art actually means and the loose woman, basically what it means. Many of us might have different thoughts about the loose woman, but she's the one who thought about it. And, you know, as a present for herself, on her that fifth birthday, she thought, why not present it for all the South Sudanese women? Abul, hi. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. You? Okay. So, kindly tell us more about what is going on here. So, um, so I'm doing oh, Lose Woman series. Um, I, I give to myself, but also to the young South Sudanese women out there that are doing amazing stuff or are, you know, striving to do the best they can do in their lives. Um, I won't explain the pieces, but I can I can talk about what the old story is because there's so many different pieces and each piece tells a story very differently. So I'm looking at, you know, my life coming back home to South Sudan you know, being raised in different cultures, coming back to South Sudan and with so much expectation, you know, culturally, politically, economically, and boom, here I am. And, you know, and, and, the, and the expectation of me as well, uh, I mean, what the people expect for me as a bull and also of other young South Sudanese women, you know. So I'm telling a story of my life but also in relation to my sisters out there and um yeah i think for for people to understand it they should really come for the exhibition and which is tomorrow but yeah okay maybe it's for somebody to understand you're talking about expectations about yourself and expectations from the society so what are some of these expectations that actually led you to thinking like i need to come up with something that's I myself can relate to and many other young women. I'm well I feel like I come from from a good place. Um by good place I mean like you know I've had you don't find a lot of young South Sudanese women that are artists or painting. Most of the times it's like you have to be a doctor, a lawyer or something. But uh, I'm from a place where at least I've, I've had somebody that has supported me. I've had, you know, my father and, and family supporting me through the art. And to me, it's just, you know, being out there, being loose there, like being able to tell people like, hey, you can break boundaries. You don't have, we all don't have to be engineers and whatever, you know, we could be whoever we want to be as long as we can, you know, maximize on it and you know be the best that we are in in, in it so it's um hmm. it's basically letting people know like 
culture, especially like, hey, be out there, you know, like. So, so that is what the lose woman means, yeah. be out there. And why did you decide to use the word lose woman? I mean, lose for me, it's more like, um, I don't know what's the English word for that. I mean, I'm just going to say sarcastic way of, uh, I mean, being in Juba, living on my own, um, 35 tomorrow, not married, and, you know, the all culture expectation. I, you know, I'm sure that they're like parents that think, Oh, so and so is like this. She's she's been living on her own. She's maybe spoiling her daughter, or whatever. I mean, obviously, I'm not loose, but I am loose. I mean, I've freed myself. I feel, and you know, to be able to do things that I would like to do, um, that are of course good for me. Um, to think beyond, you know, like to allow myself to like be able to think beyond just what it is that a woman in South Sudan is limited to think. So the loose woman, like I said, it's, um, I mean, you've seen amazing women in, in different positions. You've seen, you've seen, you know, Mama Rebecca, she's out there. She's doing what she loves to do, you know, caring for people. And you've seen Mama Angelina, like my superwoman. And, and so women like that, that have opened doors. You've seen South Sudanese on like big runways, ladies doing amazing stuff. So basically it's just to celebrate what it is being a South Sudanese woman, but going beyond what culturally you are just expected to be. And, you know, like not in the kitchen, just serving tea and doing what I remember. Hmm. Um, at some point, at some point, somebody like told me, "Hey, you know, what are you gonna do in life? You're just gonna be cooking, cause I love to cook. It's like all you do is like get married and cook for your husband. But I mean, I love to cook, and if I love that man, I'll cook for him all the way. But you know, that has never limited me, cause I know what I'm worth. I know what I can do. I know." You know, I've allowed myself to, or freed myself to think beyond just what everybody else expects, you know. Okay, and maybe for people to understand more now about the loose woman, because we have many, many arts here, like 30 pieces, and this is one of them that you're working on. So could you kindly take us through and what this art actually means? This piece in particular is, um, if you look at a lot of pieces, you find them very, very South Sudanese, very African. Um, but I've gone out of my way to use like a mask and um, what it is that is really, when you think of Africa, it's, it's usually mask, bead, you know, curry shell, and we're thinking of what Africa is portrayed to be anyway. So when you think culturally, then this is, you go back to your village, you'll find um, sometimes there are cow horns hung on trees and things. That's why you see like that. We have the cow horns, we've got ropes and, you know, like basically using cultural ornaments to, to represent the culture itself. And then you have this modern lady um, meditating or whatever it is that she's doing really. So, yeah. So how do you come up with your art? Is it imagination or you use pieces that are already, like images that are already there? Well, it's, they both, it, they vary really. I mean, you have, sometimes I have pictures that inspire the pieces and sometimes um, the backgrounds, usually you find they're mainly imagination because... I haven't gone to my village yet to see all what it, the mask and how they look like. So it depends on on what story. There's some um, life drawings, some are just from photographs. Um, there's so much on the internet, so yeah. So what is your main theme of art? Theme? Oh, wow. 
Do you have like a specific theme or it's just general thing? In general, I like to do my work in series because I mean, it depends on what I'm painting for. Like this is a story, so I'm creating a story and all the pieces tell a story. If I'm doing commercial way that I need to sell, I mean, I'll do something that I feel somebody can easily just buy. But the, the story might, you know, it might not be, I might not be as connected to it the way I am with these pieces. Okay, talking about commercializing the ads, um, do you sell? The, are you going to sell this specific series? Um, we're gonna have prints, so a lot of them will be prints, and the prints will be out like in in a month. So whoever wants will just maybe hold on to them until like a month later. So we're not, because as you see, I'm still painting. So it will need time to print, like to give like good quality prints, and that's what we will sell. But then these ones, I'll, we're hoping to exhibit them in different places, so we're not selling them yet. Okay, and on normal circumstances, when you're doing your other ads, do you sell them and at how much do you sell for somebody that might be interested and say they want to come? Um, they vary from... Oh man, they vary. <laughs> it depends. I, I can. Um, I mean, from fifty dollars to whatever it is. Uh, I was telling somebody the other day the highest piece I ever sold was six thousand dollars, and that was like a couple of years ago. So it really depends on the size. I mean, not really the size, but the story. So I can't, I can't answer that question properly. Okay, and if somebody has like a story and they want it to be done, are you in a position to do that, or you just do what you I have? Do, personally, for me, I I do what what I prefer because I mean, the different things with other people that I mean, like Silas is really good at drawing people exactly the way they look like and. Uh, and, and personally, for me, I always think if if you want a photo, you might as well just go to the studio, you know? So um, I don't do portrait. Okay. Yeah. I don't do portraits. I just, I just paint what I want. And talking about that, uh, what are some of the challenges that you go through on a day-to-day basis trying to run your artwork? Mm -hmm. Well, I think they're all situation in Juno that everyone is going through i mean economically we we're, we're not there yet i mean people are going through so much that i don't think art is a priority in some way especially for you people like to buy an artwork when you know there's a lot going on either either one of us we have a family struggling a family member so sometimes and art by the way comes with the economic situation of the country. If you look at, you know, Kenya, the art is very developed because they're, they're doing well already. Um, look at places like Europe and what art is a big deal. People invest their money in art. So you, 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 they go buy art just to keep their money the way we buy gold and all that. But then we, in Genoa, we're still like very far away. But again, if, if I look at from the time I came in 2018 to now, it's, I've seen Jinobin buy artwork. So th that also shows that we're getting somewhere. Okay, your last remarks on this. Oh my God, I thought this was a short interview. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already <laughs> getting distracted. <laughs> okay. Uh, my last remarks. Do what you love. Um, it, I mean, it doesn't come easily. Like... I mean, I've been painting since I can remember, and I only started making money seriously of art on on my artwork like not very long ago. So patience and hard work. All right, so that's all you've heard from Abul Uya on the series of the Loose Woman, basically, and the many arts that she has been doing in South Sudan. Till next time, I've been your host Yara Jack. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video on iRadio. Mm -hmm.